At the start of the movie we see the year is 2035 and planet Mars has a landing site Ares 3. We see a bunch of astronauts who are the crew of Hermes spaceship who are working and collecting samples of soil from Mars. One of the astronauts, she sees a storm warning on their screen and alerts their commander Lewis. She gathers all her team and tells them that they should abort their mission and head for their ship to depart. One of the crew members, Watney, says that they should wait here and suggests this is only a passing storm. Pilot Martinez says that because of the storm their ship could tip over and fall. The commander tells everybody to go towards the ship and they get ready to leave. When they are going towards the ship, they cannot see anything because of the storm. Because of heavy wind, one of the satellites breaks and files towards Watney, hits him and carries him with it. Lewis attempts to lead the group in locating Watney, but the storm's intensity severely limits visibility, making it exceedingly difficult for them. Despite their efforts, they are unable to locate Watney and are forced to retreat to the MAV. They come to know Watney's suit is damaged and he might have died, so they initiate liftoff. Martinez, the pilot, struggles to stabilize the rocket amidst the fierce storm, but ultimately manages to execute a successful launch from the planet. Back on Earth, during a press conference, NASA director Teddy announces that the Hermes crew managed to depart from Mars. He says that Mark Watney has been tragically lost due to an accident and is officially declared deceased. On mission day 19 following the storm's passing, Watney regains consciousness on Mars. His oxygen levels are dwindling rapidly, and his suit keeps telling him to journey back to the space station. Despite his dire circumstances, he discovers he's been hurt by a portion of an antenna, with a segment still jutting from his abdomen. Remarkably, the combination of the antenna and his own blood has formed a makeshift seal, preventing significant air leakage from his suit. He makes his way back to station and, in an excruciatingly painful process, Watney extracts the antenna. He removes a fragment lodged in the wound and then resorts to stapling the wound shut to stop the bleeding. He sits down in front of the camera to make a video log about his situation. He outlines his predicament and says he is alive but cut off from any communication with Earth or the Hermes crew. The next manned mission won't arrive for another four years, and he has to survive till then. The space station could run out of water, oxygen, and his current food supply is not enough. He says that he has food intended for six crew members, which offers him nearly 300 days sustenance, but with careful rationing, he can stretch up to 400 days. Realizing the gravity of his situation, Watney concludes that he must cultivate three years' worth of food on a barren planet devoid of life. Fortunately, he has a background as a botanist which can help survive, and he formulates a daring plan to grow potatoes. He decides to use his own shit as manure for the crops and cleans the solar panels for setting up his farm. He then begins working and setting up a farm in one of the space stations. He beings farming and plants the potatoes and lays down the manure to grow them. He realizes that his crops need more water to grow decides to create water using the unused hydrogen fuel of the rocket leftover on the planet. His plan works and now his farm is making enough water for the crops, and on day 54, he even sees his crops are growing. Back on Earth at NASA's headquarters, Teddy gives a memorial service honoring Mark Watney's dedication to exploration. Later, Mars mission director Vincent comes to meet Teddy and asks him for access of satellite to pinpoint Watney's remains. Sanders rejects the proposal, citing the public nature of satellite feeds. He says that broadcasting images of Watney's deceased body would trigger a profound political and budgetary crisis for NASA. Vincent says they cannot wait any longer and damage their reputation for future missions, so Teddy agrees. At Control Station, an engineer named Mindy discovers evidence of activity in satellite photos of the Ares 3 site. She immediately informs Teddy and Vincent. They see the pictures and cannot believe that Watney is still alive. 
The PR manager, Annie, says that they should release these images to the public and inform them. They also decide not to tell Hermes' crew about this, since they are coming home, and this could distract them. It is day 70 on Mars and Watney decides to use a rover to make it to the Schiaparelli crater that will be the landing site for Ares 4 in four years. The journey to the crater will take him 50 days, but his rover does not have enough battery power to complete the journey. He decides to use solar panels and battery of the other rover to double the battery power of the rover. At night, while traveling, he feels cold and to overcome that he decides to dig up and use the radioactive material plutonium left behind as a heat source. At NASA, Teddy and his team discuss, come to know that Watney has been using the rover to roam around the planet and has increased its battery life. Teddy asks his team to prepare a food supply ship and send it to Mars in three months. Hermes ship director Mitch feels that it is time to inform the crew about Watney, but Teddy tells him to wait a bit longer till they have a plan. We see that the crops are now ripe and Watney has managed to grow 400 potatoes on Mars successfully. While trying to find a way to contact NASA, Watney gets an idea and decides to go to a place. Watney uses the rover to find a Pathfinder probe that stopped transmitting in 1997. He hopes to use it to get in touch with NASA and digs the old probe out of the sand. Vincent realizes his plan based on his daily movement and decides to go to JPL Lab who built it. They have taken out another Pathfinder out of storage, rounded up the engineers who worked on it, and got it working again. Watney picks the probe out of the sand and brings it back to his space station. He spreads the solar panels of the probe to charge the batteries and discovers that it still works. Both the pathfinders are now linked and communication with each other. Watney uses a board to ask them if his signal is being received and the team answers by panning the Mars pathfinders camera to point at yes or no signs. Everyone is happy that they can now at least talk to each other, but only in yes, no types questions. To communicate faster and easily, Watney makes a hexadecimal clock out on the ground around his Pathfinder, and the team also recreates this at their end. NASA uses this system to tell him how to hack the rover's operating system so it can transmit text back to Earth. After hacking the system, they can now chat and Vincent informs him about the food ship they are sending him. Watney is happy to know this asks how the Hermes crew took the news that he wasn't dead. Vincent regretfully tells him that the crew hasn't been told yet since they need to concentrate on their mission. Watney gets angry on reading this and even abuses them which is broadcasted to the whole world. We see that the Hermes crew has been journeying back toward Earth during the past couple of months. They receive a video message from Director Mitch who informs the crew about the unexpected news of Watney being alive. He reveals that NASA deliberately withheld this information from them for the past two months, fearing it would disrupt their mission focus. He says that Watney doesn't blame them as they had genuine cause to believe he was deceased. The revelation igniting feelings of anger and guilt among the crew. Is his day 128 on Mars and Watney is really happy with his crop's growth and help he is getting from NASA to grow them. He even clicks a picture and sends it to them for a press release. Later in a meeting, the NASA team calculates that they can reach Watney by day 868 and Watney has the crops he's cultivating that will last slightly over 900 days. Sander feels their margin of error is very less on reaching him. While working one airlock malfunctions and explosively decompresses, hurling the airlock with Watney inside and causing his helmet to crack and leak. He uses duct tape to seal the cracks in his helmet and makes his way back to the space station. He sees that his potato crop is frozen and completely destroyed due to Mars air. The NASA team comes to know about this and they calculate that he can survive only 600 days on ration he has. They must send their food ship much sooner and start working on it. On Mars, Watney seals the broken airlock and counts his food supply to plan for future. 
At NASA, Teddy tells the team to work overtime and quickly launch the ship to resupply Watney and decides to bypass routine inspections to reduce days. The day of the launch comes and the ship is sent ad everyone is happy. Suddenly they see a malfunction happens and the ship explodes and the mission fails. This launch failure is seen by two directors from Chinese Space Administration. They discuss they can help NASA by offering their classified booster rocket technology to launch the supply craft faster and cooperate with them to save Watney. We see a scientist named Rich, who works in astrodynamics, comes to meet Vincent and says he has a plan to save Watney. He tells everyone that according to his plan, he can accelerate the returning Hermes around Earth, gaining a gravitational boost and sending it back to Mars to get Watney. Teddy says the Chinese rocket can be used to send supplies to Mars or be used to bring him home sooner. Mitch says they should follow new plan, but Teddy does not agree as it will extend the Hermes cruise days by over 500 days. The crew of the Hermes receive a cryptic message about the new plan and its details. Commander Lewis asks everyone for their opinion since it is against NASA's decision. She says if they go back to Mars, the two military members, Lewis and Martinez, will be court-martialed for mutiny and the three civilians will never be allowed to fly another mission. She calls for a unanimous vote, and they all agree to go back for Watney. NASA comes to know that Hermes has hacked their ship computers and changes course to back to Mars. Sanders is angry with Mitch. He assumes Mitch has sent the plan to Hermes and asks his resignation when the mission is over. He is now forced to announce that NASA is sending Hermes back to Mars to rescue Watney. We see that everyone starts working on the plan and Watney is making changes to his rover. Watney will travel 3,200 km in his rover to Ares 4 MAV site, where he will use the MAV to go in space. Hermes will catch this MAV in space without landing as they don't have much fuel left and return back to Earth. The Chinese rocket is launched successfully in space and the Hermes has swung around Earth and collected the supplies and they start traveling back to Mars. Seven months have passed and it is day 461. Watney has lost a lot of weight and his teeth are rotting. He prepares his rover for the final journey to Ares 3 site and records his last video message. He begins his journey where he stops every day for 13 hours to sleep and recharge the rover's batteries with solar panels. During his travel of more than 30 days, he sees how vast and beautiful Mars is. The scientists at Earth discuss that Watney needs to make his MAV lighter so that he can reach the required altitude for Hermes to catch him. Martinez will manually control the MAV and launch it in space to make it go faster. Watney has reached the MAV and begins his work of making it lighter in weight. He removes all the navigation and control systems and uses a trap on the ship cone. Hermes is about to reach Mars and the crew discuss the plan. The final day comes and everyone on Earth is gathered to witness this. Watney shaves, wears his suit and gets into MAV. The Hermes crew has reached Mars and contacts him. Watney feels happy and cries and thanks them for coming back. Martinez launches the MAV into orbit, but realizes it is moving very slow and will not reach the desired altitude. They come to know that their ship is moving fast and the MAV isn't, and they need to adjust their course to reach Watney. They explain the situation to Watney and ask him if he is all right and tell him they are figuring out a plan. Lewis makes a plan and tells everyone about it. The crew constructs an explosive to blow the front hatch and place the bomb on T ship. The bomb explodes and this causes escaping air to slow the huge ship down. Commander Lewis wears the spacesuit and decides to go out to catch Watney. She uses tether to reach Watney, but she can't get close enough. Watney punctures the palm of his glove to propel himself toward Lewis with the escaping air jet. He has very little control so he misses her. However, he runs into the tether and uses it to wind around himself and Lewis and the crew is able to reel them in. The crew informs NASA and everyone on Earth is happy. The crew hugs Watney and jokes about how bad he is smelling. After one year later, we see Watney is now an instructor to aspiring astronauts. 
He shares his experience and tells them to overcome any problem, they need to just start solving it one after another. Few years later, we see that Ares 5 is being launched by NASA and few crew members are promoted, and some are retired but all are watching the launch.